today's meeting with public comment. If anyone has a comment on item not on today's agenda, please raise your hand. I don't, I don't see any hands, hands raised. No, oh, no hands raised. <clears throat> so so um, before we move to the consent calendar, I'm going to move item number 15 up. up. Commissioner Chen Crawley, would you like to introduce our guest, the Poet Laureate of San Mateo C County, Ian Casano, and, and read the proclamation recognizing <clears throat> it as National Poetry Month? Thank you, President Ryrie. It would be my honor to do that. Um, as you know, the Poet Laureate spoke at our meeting um, in early 2021, and I think we were probably one of the first agencies to have the Poet Laureate read um, something, and, and I think it was very, um, it was a very appropriate after the pandemic since poetry seemed to be, you know, a, a source of comfort and art in general, especially um, out on the coast where there are lots of artists. And so the source of comfort extended to visit visitors coming to the coast as well. So um, thank you, Poet Laureate Eileen Casanetto for being there for us when, um, when you know, we started our year in 2021. Um, Melanie or Lizzie, I don't know if Eileen is if she should be a panelist as well, if she because she's going to read one of her poems, so I'm, I'm going to do the after the proclamation. But if Eileen can be a panelist, so that we can all hear her poetry, I just uh, promoted her. Okay, great. Hi, Eileen. Welcome. Good afternoon. Um, did you want me to read now? Well, if you want to, uh, yeah, why don't you go ahead and I'll just give you the proclamation, read the proclamation afterwards. Uh, sure. Um, so thank you, Commissioner Corrali. Good afternoon, honorable members of the commission. I'm honored to join you today to accept the um, National Poetry Month proclamation. Um, I wish to share a poem to honor all those who endeavored through the pandemic, especially our first responders who worked around the clock over and beyond what was expected to get us to where we are today. Take heart, take heart from a hummingbird, a handful of earth. See how memory bears fruit to carry history, healing offspring. Listen for sounds gently rising above the hum and din, the prayers of one so far from home and kin. Say you remembered to put out feeders, withhold water from inflorescent tomcat clovers. Say you are here in lieu of flowers. What did you lose the year of our sheltering? Whom do you honor with the hope you bring? Take heart, listen. Sounds of kindness are bouncing off hard surfaces. Praise bedside care and all its auspices. Thank you. Thank you, Eileen. That was beautiful, as always. Um, but right now, what we want to do is have the Harbor District issue a proclamation to um, you uh, in honor of National Poetry Month for 2022. And so if I will read the proclamation and, um, and we'd be honored for you to accept it. Whereas the Academy of American Poets established the month of April as National Poetry Month in 1996, and whereas National Poetry Month seeks to highlight the extraordinary legacy and ongoing achievement of American poets, introduce Americans to the pleasures and benefits of reading poetry, bring poets and poetry to the public in immediate and innovative ways, make poetry an important part of our children's education. And whereas as National Poetry Month, under the leadership and direction of the American Academy of American Poets is now the largest literary celebration in the world. And whereas poetry enhances and enriches the lives of all Americans, and whereas poetry as an essential part of the arts and humanities affects every aspect of life in America today, including education, the economy, and community pride and development, and whereas poetry has produced some of the nation's leading creative artists and has inspired other artists in fields such as music, theater, film, dance, and the visual arts, 
And now, therefore, not me, but you, Nancy Reitering, president of the San Mateo County Harbor District Board of Commissioners, do hereby proclaim April 1st through April 30th as National Poetry Month. Um, she calls upon public officials, educators, librarians, and all the people of the County of San Mateo to observe this month to celebrate the cultural riches our community has to offer and to recognize the important role poetry has in creating and sustaining this great nation with appropriate ceremonies, activities, and programs. In witness thereof, she hereto sets her hand this 20th day of April in the year 2022. Um, on behalf of Nancy Ryering, president of the Harbor Board, Eileen, congratulations. We're honored that you're here with us today. Um, to share your poem. And on behalf of the Harbor Board, uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for supporting poets and poetry, um, especially in the coastside um, region. Thank you so much. Thank you, Eileen. Thank you so much for jo joining us today, Eileen. It's always a pleasure to hear you read poetry. And now when I'm, I'm in my hummingbird who are eating me out, out of house and I will think of, think of you. Um, okay, we are, uh, thank you, Virginia, too, for reading the proclamation. We're going to move on to the consent calendar now, and uh, the commissioners have items they would like to pull, pull today's consent calendar, or do I have a motion, motion to approve? I'll move to approve the consent calendar. I'd like to uh, remove the last item. Item num number six. I think so. Okay. That's a DVA key properties. Yep. Okay, I'll be out at the end of today's agenda. Thank you. Um, who made the motion? I did. Do you want I to need, that I need motion? a second. President Ryrie, you do have one hand raised. Oh, that was me. Uh, uh, Mr. Olam has his hand raised. Okay, um, I'll take his comment. I'd like to get a, uh, I'd like to straighten out the motion. Um, um, Commissioner Chan Corelli, can you amend your motion to exclude item number six? Sure. I'll, I'll amend that to um, remove number six so that we'll approve items one through five. So my motion is to approve the consent calendars for items one through five. I'll second that. Okay, second. Thank you. Um, uh, Melanie, any roll call, please? Uh, you should take public comment before the roll call. Oh, okay. All right, we have, we have a hand raised up, up on Olam. Go ahead, go ahead. Lindsay? Do you want me to uh, allow him to speak or are you going to do that? Yeah, I'll do that. I'm sorry, I'm figuring out. Okay. President Mary, that's me, Mr. Olam. You don't refer to public either last name in that manner. I can't tell if I'm on. You are on, Mr. Elton. Great. Well, the poetry thing, which I tried to comment on, is just another example of how this commission chooses to waste money and staff time and bandwidth to promote a silly goal by one commissioner who wants to for some reason, impose her love of poetry on the rest of us. Well, I think that's great that she loves poetry. I really do. But that's not what the Harbor District is here for. That's not why they're paying Miss Ortiz hundreds of dollars an hour to sit and listen. That's not why you're spending hundreds of dollars an hour to have staff be part of. National Poetry Day 
has already been declared. I don't know why Nancy Rearing thinks she needs to declare National Poetry Month because it doesn't matter whether she does or not. It's already a fact. And I do like poetry. I like rap music. And there's a whole bunch of poetry that I could start reciting right now that some people would consider filth, but other people consider art. So this is a joke. And it's a waste of time. And Miss Corrali and Miss Rearing, you should both be ashamed of how you force your love of something on the rest of us and then spend taxpayer dollars to do it. Thank you. So, President Ryan, we have a motion. My, my, sorry, is my audio on? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we have a motion and a second to approve the consent calendar for items one through five. Thank you. Melanie, roll call, call please. Commissioner Zempi. You're on mute, Bill. Aye. <laughs> Commissioner Matush. Aye. Commissioner Chang Raleigh. Aye. Mr. Lorenas? Aye. President Ryra. We'll move to the discussion now. now. Um, item number seven, seven, San Mateo County Harbor District 22 Master, Master Plan. And, and Jim, this is your item. Uh, President Ryring, thank you very much, yeah. Commissioners. Uh, the recommendation from staff is the master plan dated March 2022 is approved and adopted by the San Mateo County Harbor District. And further, the general manager is directed to consider the approved master plan in the 2022-2023 budget development. So on February 17th, 2021, the Harbor District Commission authorized the general manager to enter into a contract with DUDEC to assist the Harbor District in developing a master plan. The development and public outreach for the master plan included condition surveys conducted of all our facilities and issued in a summary report. We did canvases and pop-ups at both Oyster Point on June 5th and Pillar Point on June 12th. We hosted three separate workshops on July 13th, August 10th, and September 9th. All were well attended. The input provided to us through the summary reports, the pop-ups, the canvas, the interviews, and the workshops were all considered and the development of the uh, public input and revision of the plan. That draft master plan was presented to the Board of Harbor Commissioners at a public meeting on December 15th, 2021. And on March 10th, 2022, DUDAC delivered to the San Mateo County Harbor District the final 2022 master plan. And again, recommended motion is the master plan dated March 22, 2022 is approved and adopted by the San Mateo County Harbor District. And further, the general manager is directed to consider the approved master plan in the 2022-2023 budget development. Standing by for any questions, if, if there are any. I see two members members of the public have their hands raised. Sabrina, Sabrina, Ben. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, so I had a question and a comment. Um, did the Harper District request all of the following agencies to provide input on the proposed Harbor District master plan that's included with this board packet. That's the San Mateo County Resource Conservation District, California Coastal Commission, California Division of Boating and Waterways, Regional Water Quality Control Board, Greater Farallons and Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuaries, U.S. 
Army Corps of Engineers, Harbor P Patrol partnership with allied agencies. So that means all the allied agencies, San Francisco Bay Conservation and Development Commission. So that's a question. And then secondly, I'm speaking on behalf of the Sierra Club Loma Prieta Chapter Equity Committee. Um, we have numerous concerns with this master plan and we would like to follow up um, on those concerns because the two minutes allotted to me today is not nearly enough time to go into the concerns at a later date. Um, we can do that with the agencies that I just listed. Thank you. I'm not sure why you're still letting the time run out because I'm done with my comment. Thank you. We have um, another call caller. Kendra, you have your hand up. Cassandra, I've sent you a request to unmute. Okay, there you are. You said Cassandra, correct? That's correct. We hear you okay. loud and clear. Wonderful, thank you. I appreciate the time. I just wanted to express my support for the master plan and particular the and particularly the public process and input from a, a wide swath of the communities you serve, and in particular, those of us who have businesses within the harbor. Our business, Maverick Surf Company, has been a tenant in the harbor for 11 years now and has seen significant changes over those, those 11 years. I'm excited about the planned developments and the investment in the infrastructure in Pillar, Park, in Pillar Point Harbor in particular. Um, the potential for this site to be a jewel, not only in our community, but in the greater Bay Area is huge. And um, I am excited to have a business uh, and be a part of it and look forward to this going through um, and being funded. Thank you. We have uh, attendee John Olam. We'll be speaking next. Thank you, President Carreri. I'd like to say I totally agree with Cassandra that uh, Pillar Point Harbor has the potential to be a jewel. Unfortunately, because of commitments that were rushed into and made hastily for reasons that they'll have to explain themselves, the Harbor District is obligated to spend $45 million at South San Francisco and we will later find out today, the Harvard District just realizes it doesn't have anything like $45 million to spend on projects that it is obligated to fund. So they are not obligated to fund anything at Pillar Point. But because Tom Matouche and Virginia Chain Corrali and Robert Bernardo were so desperate to gain, I don't know what, brownie points, endorsements from people up in South San Francisco, they put the whole Harbor District in a horrible position. Now you said there was a lot of public input on this, Minch. Maybe I think you're exaggerating that. But none of us knew at the time when we were making our input that the Harbor District had already obligated itself to $45 million for another agency's infrastructure that it does not have. And as of April 1st, when they had a meeting with the liaison committee up in South San Francisco, it still hadn't been addressed. It's like they figured it out last the first week of April. So I'm not sure how our, our input was meaningful when half the projects we were talking about can't be funded. I would hope you address this and explain why this master plan has any relevance whatsoever. Thank you. I 
I don't, don't see uh, any other hands raised. I'll start our discussion today by saying what an, an impressive body of work this represents it's from the Harvard District staff, our board, our general manager, Jim Pruitt, and the very, very important input of the, the public over the last three years. Thank you very, very much for this work. Commissioner, do you have comments? Uh, yes, thank you, Nancy. Um, I'd like to add my uh, comments too, that uh, I did go through the report and I think it was very well done. Um, there are uh, comments I know that people have raised with the question of, well, how are we gonna be able to do all of the things that we say we'd like to do in the master plan, which is really, I think the, the point of the master plan is to define what we would like to accomplish. Uh, the next step will be to try and figure out how we get there, which one of the points will include, how do we fund all that? Um, and I don't think the goal of the master plan was necessarily to um, come up with all the funding sources, uh, but more again, more of the possibilities that are out there in the future. So I think it was a good job. I think it was well done. And uh, I, uh, I like the master plan. Thank you, Commissioner Zemke, Commissioner Lorenas. Um, I have a question, if I may, um, the staff. Um, in the Appendix A, where we talk about the, in the master plan, where we talk about Johnson Pier renovation, we have um, the, the condition and safety rating as, as uh, critical, which I don't think anyone would disagree with. And then underneath that, we have funding status, as funded, it's rank number five. Um, maybe I'm not understanding what we're saying here, but it's my understanding that we don't have funding to do this. Could you clarify that for me? President Ryering, would you like me to address that? Please. Thank you for the question, Commissioner Lorenas. You, you are correct. Uh, with the increased funding or cost of the project, we do not have the $38 million to fund the project. We do have the funding and the board is approved and we're moving forward with uh, the design engineering permit uh, to get the project shovel ready. And that will also enable us better, uh, to be better positioned to uh, seek additional funding to do that project as the project will, will be uh, ready to go and we can specifically define those to the different funding sources. And it's my intention to come back to the board uh, in a few months with potential methods of funding uh, and asking the board for additional <clears throat> guidance on that. So, uh, but Johnson Pier is not the only project that we're facing significant price hikes and funding issues. But the engineering design and permitting is fully funded and we're moving forward with that. Right. So is that going to get corrected in the table because it did? Yes. Okay. That's great. Um, I have another question. Once the board approves this master plan, does it have to be approved by the Coastal Commission? Do they weigh in on this at all? I don't believe they have to approve the master plan as it doesn't, uh, doesn't does not construct or change anything. It's just okay. a, it's a plan for the Harbor District to move forward. Individual projects that the, the board approves because of the master plan or following the master plan does have to go through full approval of the Coastal Commission. I see. Thank you. Um, comments on the, I won't comment on all the specifics because there's a lot here. Um, but I do have one more question for you is sure. if you would, can you tell me in, in a more analytical sense how the outreach went? Because my impression is, and I haven't seen any numbers related to this, but when I've gone to the meetings, our attendance was relatively poor. Um, most of the folks that 
attended these meetings had a specific topic in mind. You know, they were either a tenant of ours or were, had some vested interest. But the general public, I don't remember seeing a lot of folks joining any of our meetings. For the outreach portion of it, we did publish it in uh, a notice in the paper. We also did uh, email outreach to all our email lists, and we also did our social media platforms. We put it all out on that also. Uh, we shared it with all our agents, uh, agent partner agencies, uh, and you are correct. The general public of San Mateo County uh, did not take time out of their schedules to participate on a large scale, but we did get a lot, uh, a significant number of parties that were interested in uh, the Harbor District and what we were doing with both Pillar Point Harbor and Oyster Point Marina. But you are correct, they were interested parties. Um, and my problem with that is I, I know you guys, the staff especially did, did a lot of work to, to uh, do outreach. I'm not sure how the cons our consultants that did this work um, did the work that they did, but it, it kind of reminds me of a of a kid who's told by his parents to go do their homework, and they spend half the day doing their homework and come up short. You know, they they put a great effort in, which is fine, but. They didn't get it done. And that's how, kind of how I feel about this master plan is with respect to outreach to the public. There's a lot in here to be proud of because we have a great, great harbor here at Pillar Point. And there's a lot in here that, that speaks to protecting it and looking towards the future that, as some of our members of the public just said, we're very happy with. But the outreach to the general public was lacking, I find. The other issue I have with our master plan is that um, we don't really identify funding sources for a lot of this. And I wonder um, how realistic it actually is. But there's no way to know that from this, from this master plan. Um, it would have been nice just to have, a, have some aspect of it relate to the funding sources and some input from them in, in form of, uh, of either conversations or something to document. Um, the other portion of this that I don't see anywhere really is a, any kind of timeline. I understand a timeline is difficult when you don't have the funding, but we, we have uh, ranking tables and that's it. So I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with uh, the general plan from, for the master plan, but I'm really not happy with, uh, with the outreach and with the lack of a timetable. I think that's it for me. Commissioner Tush. Let's see, <clears throat> lower my hand. So I did want to move to approve the master plan dated March 2022 uh, to be approved and adopted by the San Mateo County Harbor District. And furthermore, the general manager is directed to consider the approved master plan in the 2022-2023 budget development. <clears throat> so that's my motion. And uh, my comment would be, we put the notices out and large swaths of the public were not interested in attending those that were attended. So uh, we did everything we we're obligated to do to announce the meetings to the public. So I'll second, motions. sorry, Tom. Go ahead. I was gonna second your motion and make a comment, but please finish up. I'm done. I'll second that motion. Can I make, can too? Sorry. And you have a comment too before? I, I do, I do. So I want to thank the staff for the hard work that they did in um, 
engaging the public. You, you really can't force the public to go to a meeting if they don't want to go. But I know because it was, I was the board president last year that there were numerous meetings and I'd actually heard from members of the public that they were glad to see a lot of the meetings. It's always easy to criticize people um, and, and make negative comments when you're not as involved. Like we, you know, like in 2019, when the strategic plan wasn't finalized in the uh, last quarter, and it took the three commissioners who were fully engaged, the you know, that for us to do that. And so that took a lot of work. Um, and also by our new uh, general manager, kind of at that time, Jim Pruitt, and this was the last quarter of 2019. And I know it carried over into 2020. So, Jim, I want to thank you and I want to thank the staff for all of the work and the outreach that y'all did do. Um, I think that the the report looks great. And um, yes, could there be improvements? No question. Right. And I think we might be looking at different things later on. I don't I don't know. I mean, but the pandemic certainly you have to remember this was pre pandemic. And now we're we were we kind of transitioned into a different world, and you know now we're looking at finalizing a plan that I think you know is kind of a living document as well, especially from a budgetary component from a budgetary perspective. So Jim, thank you. I know it took a lot of time for you to put these meetings together. I know that Melanie put a lot of agendas together, and I know Julie was there as well with all the the supporting documents to um, help with all of the public meetings that we did have. So thank you so much for doing on this and thank you to the members of the public who did attend. Um, I think that we had a very broad group of stakeholders from um, other agencies to our tenants and, and you know just to the members of the public in general, they're all outlined uh, in the report and I hope that people will take the time to read it. Um, but thank you so much, Jim, Melanie, Julie, John Moran as well. I, mean, I know that you had to be that bridge, John. Um, so thank you, thank you. And um, you know, I'd like to just do the vote and call for the question. I have a question. I've called for the question. Um. I believe if he calls the question, then we the vote. Is that correct? Vote on calling the question correct. Okay. So, Melanie, roll call, call, please. Commissioner Rajush? Aye. Commissioner Changarali? Aye. Commissioner Marinas? No. President Ryrie? Aye. Commissioner Zepkin? Aye. Yeah. Everyone, the motion carries. We We're calling the question. So now we have to vote on Tom's motion to oh, approve. That's right. All right. Okay. Vote on the motion to approve. Melanie. Commissioner Chang Molly. Aye. Commissioner Marinas. No. President Ryrie. Aye. Commissioner Zemke. Aye. Commissioner Matush. Aye. Thank you. The motion carry carries. Um, now we move to. Um, I move. Still have a question. Uh, Commissioner Lorenas. Um, thank you. So the the question I asked before was I realized it like it did say in our master plan the process that was used to gather folks' input. But my question was, is there? information on the number of people that attended our meetings. Is there a table anywhere? I couldn't find any any documentation that said we had this number, we reached out to this many people. It's sad to me, Commissioner Lorena Lorena, that you are so obsessed with, with this issue. In the three years years that I've been aboard, you have consistently complained about the lack of public input, but I have, I have seen the district being consistently uh, transparent and posting notices and really good job of outreach. So, so um, I think Jim can probably answer your question. You're entitled to your opinion, but please don't characterize my opinions in a negative way. Um, Jim, do you, know, do you know if there is any 
any numbers on this? I do not believe there's any numbers on this and it's not published in the uh, master plan itself, but I can reach back to DUDAC to see uh, if they do have numbers and provide it to you. It would be nice to include some uh, appendix in this just to document the, the uh, results of the outreach. Thank you. We no, have noted. I'll see what I can do. Thank you. A member of the public, um, was your hand raised? Because Sandra. Yes, thank you. I just, uh, I, I'm sorry. I just wanted to, uh, are you able to hear me okay? Yeah. Yes, loud and clear. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I wanted to um, say that I, I hear uh, what Mr. Lorenus and Mr. Olam and Ms. Brennan are saying, and I actually um, appreciate that input in a position that I had formerly in healthcare. We had a, a huge project and, of course, a master plan, um, but at a time when people just weren't interested in attending meetings. And so it took a, a more rigorous social media um, outreach program and numbers that weren't always quantifiable. Um, but we were also a public agency. And what I found was even, no, even though we would agree on these items that are on the public agenda or just on just in the master plan or even phases of the project for reconstruction, all of that eventually had to go back to the public board for discussion and approval. And it gave even further, more of a drilled down look at specific items as they came up, which was a lot easier for the public to digest in small amounts. So I, my comments, I, I still um, appreciate and actually like the master plan and we'll continue to look at it in the, in the smaller bites as they come up, because I think it is an essential time at that point for the public to speak up. And maybe um, they might, might not attend meetings online or in person, but perhaps the social media outreach on that at those points could be more rigorous to try to get that kind of feedback. And that's, that's all I have to say. Moving on to the next topic, uh, uh, Vessel Location Emergency Expenditure Authorization Pillar Point Harbor. John Moore, and this is your item. John Warren? Yeah, I'm sorry, can you hear me now? Yes. I, uh, this is a, a motion to retroactively authorize an emergency expenditure of $28,510 by the general manager to relocate the 94-foot tug vessel, Caleb, from the Pillar Point Harbor work dock to an anchorage in the outer harbor. Without receiving permission from the harbor master or any district staff, the captain of the 94-foot tug vessel, Caleb, docked at the... Uh, Dock the vessel at the Pillar Point Harbor work dock. Uh, the work dock is not designed to accommodate a vessel of this size and the dock uh, sustained damage as a result. Staff successfully or unsuccessfully attempted to, uh, to contact the Caleb owner to move the vessel, um, but was um, again unsuccessful. The US Coast Guard responded to the abandoned vessel and oversaw the removal of hazardous materials uh, for the safety of the docks, other tenant vessels, and to clear the dock for commercial fisher use, the general manager entered into an agreement with Global Diving and Salvage Incorporated for an amount of $28,510 to, to purchase appropriate sized ground tackle and have the vessel uh, moved by a professional tug vessel uh, out to the uh, outer harbor um, until the legal process takes place for final disposition of the vessel. Okay, I'll open this up for board decision. Uh, Commissioner Matus, you have your hand, hand raised? Yeah, I'd like to uh, retroactively, uh, I do move to retroactively authorize the emergency expenditure of $28,500. Am I, uh, yeah. 
by the general manager to relocate the uh, 94 foot tug Caleb from the Pacific or from the Pillar Point Harbor work dock to the anchorage in the outer harbor. And I have a comment on the same subject. I was down there when the uh, tug Bearcat was moving the Caleb and I was extremely happy to see that. I thought that it was leaving the harbor <clears throat> and uh, we've got a history with that boat that's uh, not favorable to the Harbor District. I look forward to that boat leaving the Harbor District and not ever returning. I'll second that motion, President Wiring. Thank you. Do we have any discussion? No, we have, we have a member of the public with their hand, their hand raised, Sabrina Brennan. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I had my hand raised um, on the last agenda item and one member of the public was allowed to comment twice, but for whatever reason, that did not happen to all members of the public that had their hands raised. So I just wanna point out the inequity there. Um, I've witnessed repeatedly uh, Commissioner Nancy Waring marginalizing an elected commissioner um, over and over again in these meetings and using personal attacks against a sitting elected commissioner. And I just think this is very unprofessional. And I think that uh, this board really needs to clean up its behavior. I also think that the master plan is a silo planning effort. And I, when I was still serving on the Harbor Commission, I did bring up these issues. So this is nothing new. Um, I was very clear that we needed to work closely with our partner agencies because apparently unbeknownst to you guys, um, the Harbor District does not operate in a silo by itself. It actually has to work with other partner agencies to get things approved, to get funding, to move things forward. So um, it appears that outreach wasn't done with the State Lands Commission, the RCD, the Coastal Commission, Boating and Waterways, um, Water Quality Control Board, NOAA, the Army Corps of Engineers, partnered agencies, and also the Bay Conservation and Development Commission. This is extremely problematic. I also agree with Commissioner Ed Lorenis's comments regarding a lack of public input. Thank you. Trisha, sure, sure. let me ask you, um, the public was confused about what agenda we were on. Um, what's the best course of action to take during a meeting when that happens? Well, you did let the other uh, member of the public speak. It seemed fine to let, you know, the, an additional member of the public speak, but um, it is best to, once a once an item is completed, you know, take no further public comment and then just move on to the next item. Thank you. So we have a motion and a second on this item. And Commission, is there any further discussion or, or can- I have a comment, I have my hand up. Okay, I can't see, hold on. I, I still see timer. Um, Commissioner Schnurler, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I too was happened to see the, the action with the tug. Um, I'd like to point out that when this was going on, we had gale force winds in the harbor. Um, and I'd really like to thank Jim and John and our staff, the guys that were that worked with the tug, they did a great job moving a commercial vessel like that, especially where it was safely, is um, not an easy feat. And they did it very well. The, I don't know if it was, if you all know, but the, the tug was taken out, put on the mooring that was laid down and it drug again, the, the salvage folks had to bring it back, tie it up, go back out, reset the mooring lines, all of this in not really easy conditions to move, move a vessel like that around. And um, they did a fantastic job. And so I 
I really applaud the staff and Jim and Coast Guard for hiring the right people to do a very difficult job. And I'm hopeful, just like Tom, our Commissioner Matouche, that, that someday that we'll deal with that thing and we'll never see it again. It's a giant albatross for the district. And it may be a, a message to us to rethink how we let vessels like that into our harbor. It should have never been in here in the first place. Thanks. Yeah, I've had discussions with um, with Jim on that, that on that big, and some, sometimes we can't, can't control them into the harbor. Unfortunately, we do we do this sometimes with these very very challenging situations. It's really really a shame, it's because it all is up on the taxpayer. Pay. And there are serious env environmental um, and legal issues that the Harbor District has to end, end up dealing with, not to mention financial concerns. So it looks like we're ready, ready for a call. Melanie. Commissioner Lorenis. Aye. President Ryrick. Aye. Commissioner Zemke. Aye. Commissioner Matouche. Aye. Commissioner Jane Crowley. Aye. The motion carries. Uh, item number nine, Killer Point Harbor, West Trail Living Shore Project update, John Warren. Again, this is your item. Yes. Commissioners, this is a, a motion to approve the West Trail Living Shoreline Project Construction Change, change Orders and, and quantity overruns totaling $58,578.06 for a new total final project construction cost of $2,335,672.66. Since 2012, the district has been working to protect the eroded West Trail shoreline. Design engineering consultant GHD was contracted to develop the plans. Pursuant to direction, from the Board um, of Harbor Commissioners and the California Coastal Commission, in August of 2019, District Consultant GHD reevaluated the alternatives with an emphasis on living shoreline approach with minimal hard armoring. The upper concrete swale located at the top of the adjacent bluff was also addressed. The concrete swale now channels rainwater from the bluff um, top to the mouth of a downpipe which was replaced and covered. The upper swale now directs marine water to a nearby natural marsh wetlands. The project invitation for bid for actual construction was solicited and low bid of $2,070,086 was approved by the board with a 10% contingency for a total project cost of $2,277,094.60. Uh, by the Board of Harbor Commissioners on August 18th, 2021. The approved contractor, Michael Roberts Construction Inc., um, has now completed, substantially completed the project. Um, during the last phases of the construction, it was determined that additional quantities of materials and work would be needed. Um, additional sand, reinforcement of the headwall footing, insulation of um, erosion control blankets in the bio um, retention basin, um, to protect the bioretention soil from erosion because um, native vegetation planting had to be delayed due to the need for um, to wait for the rainy season. And um, installation of additional decomposed granite on the trail between the project area and the parking lot. We also had demolition um, and removal um, backfill um, of an um, unanticipated storm drain catch basin structure at the bottom of the corrugated metal, the old corrugated metal um, storm drain pipe. And we also added, while, while the equipment was mobilized, the resurfacing of the entire West Trail parking lot. This additional work was not included in a previously approved total project cost. Therefore, staff requests the board to consider approval of the attached change order and quantity overruns for an amount of $58,578.06 over the previously approved amount, bringing the total final project cost 
to two million three hundred thirty-three, two million three hundred thirty-five thousand six hundred seventy-two sixty-six, due to the fact that delaying approval um, of the additional fifty-eight thousand seven hundred or five hundred seventy-eight thousand um, and six cents would cost the district over a thousand dollars a day. The general manager executed the change order under his emergency procurement authority. Thank you, Mr. Morin. Before we have, we have our discussion, I see a member of the public with their, their hand raised, John on all of Thank you, President Carl Rearing. Um, just want to say this is one of the examples of where the Harbor District has really shown it's worth something. Uh, Due to some hard work on the part of a couple of the commissioners, this uh, went from just an ugly piece of concrete into being something that we all can be proud of, that will probably be parts of uh, highlighted in uh, trade magazines and around the country as an example of out of the box thinking, an example of elected officials really going to bat for their constituents and making a difference. Now, there's no point and giving any credit to the elected officials who really worked hard both behind the scenes and in public to make this type of project happen. But we all know who will take credit for it and who will not under any circumstances admit that it was Ed Lorenus and Sabrina Brennan who not only brought about this really cool project but we're criticized for doing so by the very same people who are going to take credit for it. So good job, guys. And a great job on part of staff of making the right kind of move at the right kind of time when something needed to be done, they got done. Thank you. We have another member of the public, Jay Clark. Clark. Mr. Clark. Clark. I've sent you a request to unmute. Unmute. Okay, here I am. I think I got it. Can you hear me now? We hear you. Thank you. Commissioners, thank you. Um, it's been refreshing watching. I think uh, Mr. Mr. Clark was muted again. Hey, Clark, if you could just unmute again. Okay, unmute. All right, how's that? We hear okay. you. Okay. Thank you for uh, the commissioner's work. Uh, to actually get this project completed. Um, it's been needed for 20 years that I've been on that trail. And uh, to see it finally come to fruition is uh, really good. No matter who gets the credit for it, uh, there are five commissioners there. And um, it takes not only that commission, but the community to support it, to actually get it done. Um, I would also like to uh, bring the notice that um, where they put the, um, how they rebuilt the trail right as you start to go around the first point there, um, it's changed the water flow, it's changed the beach line, and the construction company actually left quite a bit of debris in the water out towards the point. And as a ocean user, um, and having a business that has paddle boarding and wing foiling and all that kind of activities going on, it made it extremely dangerous to go over to the west shore and get out of the water. I believe that the next low tide when the construction company can is to scrape the rocks that they left out there because they're, they're not normal ocean sea rocks. These rocks are sharp construction rocks. And it, they probably came out of the demolition that they did 
to set in the new bedrock. But um, I'm thankful for uh, the new trail and look forward to uh, spending a lot more time in the water. And um, I'm looking forward to continued projects in both harbors, both uh, Oyster Point and Half Moon Bay in just making it, making it a better place. It's really cool. Thank you all. Have a great day. I don't any other members of the public. Commissioner Lorena, I see your hand up. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'd like to thank Mr. Clark for his comments. I had the same question. Um, maybe that's something staff could talk about in a moment. I'd also like to point out that um, this project received quite a lot of accolades and I'm hoping that we can do a similar project further down the beach towards some of the, like the yacht club, for example, or out over towards the, the what would that be? The, the North East breakwater or jetty. We have some unpermitted rock armoring in some of these places. Now I realize that it would take more than just the Harbor district to get involved in this because some of that property is private property. Some of it's owned by the county and the same at Pillar Point Marsh that's, that's owned by the county and managed by the um, county parks. But I think if this is an opportunity, especially now since folks are very interested in dealing with, with the impacts of climate change, to do this similar kind of work in collaboration with our county partners and also with the landowners. I think if they, landowners that have the property adjacent, for example, the Yacht Club, um, see the kind of work that's done at that trail and that there's potential to protect their property and at the same time continue to provide public access even at higher tides, they would, the public and the homeowners would be very appreciative of that. And I think this is an opportunity moving forward to do such a project. I think that's um, county property, isn't it, Jim? You're muted. The district owns the, the parking lot, the trail from the parking lot to the trail entrance, and then the trail out to Mavericks Beach. Going the other direction from the trail to the marsh in front of the yacht club, the private residences, the Mavericks house around to Barbara's fish trap, and then to Capistrano Beach is all uh, Princeton or the county or private. The district is, doesn't have any jurisdiction over that riprap or uh, marsh or trying to repair that it'd be outside our our work area. Thank you, Jim. And Ed, Ed, I can answer if it's all right to, yes, to um, well, the public comment and your concerns as well with regard to exposed rock. No um, material that was associated with the um, demolition and filling in within the project area was redeposited elsewhere out of the project area. There was um, sand yeah. um, excavated for beneficial reuse, but the contractors were directed to be very careful in not disturbing um, any of the rocks that were exposed because it was brought to our attention that birds were roosting on them. So we did the very best, or the, the I believe the general contractor under the guidance of our design engineering consultant did the very best they could out there. Any um, rocks that were exposed that are, um, you know, that currently um, have more sharp edges because maybe they were not exposed prior, um, I believe will dull with time. Um, it's kind of an uh, unfortunate byproduct of this project, I believe. Thank you, John. Can I finish my comment too? Um, 
Uh, Jim, thank you for, for uh, clarifying the boundaries. And my comment really is related to this is an opportunity for the district to show a, a, some leadership in terms of bringing together all the right agencies and landowners, including us, because we do have a sand management problem that can contribute towards removing, doing essentially the same thing we did on the West Trail. There's, you know, we're going to be moving sand around the harbor for a long time. And so there's, there's opportunities for us to use it for to protect landowners and and county properties in a way that benefits the public as well. You are correct, uh, Commissioner Lorenas. the The water areas we can deposit sand in there if we had a project for that, and we are currently it, the, the committee's not real active right now, but there is uh, the plan Princeton, and that. It does. Is try, they're trying to address uh, the waterfront in Princeton and trying to clean up all that riprap. Uh, but the, that committee were were part of, but it's not real active right now. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Chango Changley. Yeah. Thank you, President Reinring. So I just want to echo um, what Jeff Clark said, which is basically to thank the community for their support. I've been talking to a lot of people um, up and down the coast side, and they love the progress of the West Trail. Um, and so I just want to thank them for their support and the support of the three commissioners who voted for this project at the time. So thank you, Nancy and Tom. For, uh, voting for that. Um, and with that, I'll just call for the question. <clears throat> Melanie, uh, uh, we're calling the question. I don't believe that we have a motion. Do we have a motion in a second? Yeah, I think, uh, didn't Bill make the motion? No, I don't think that we have a motion. Yet. Oh, well, then I'll move. Yeah. I'll, I'll move. To sorry, thank you, Tom. Um, let me pull it up. I'll move to approve the West Trail Living Shoreline Project construction change order and quantity overruns totaling fifty six thousand two twenty five oh eight and eight cents above the previously approved project total cost of two million two hundred seventy seven thousand ninety four dollars and sixty cents. Okay, and I will second that. Would Commissioner Corrali like to amend her motion to uh, include the revised amounts put in by uh, Mr. Moran? Did I miss? Sure, yes, I'll amend that. I'll but amend my 50, motion. 58,000 was the. Sorry, base. okay, <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm, yes, 58,000 from the 56,000 and change. Yeah, from the 56,000 and change. So I, I don't know if Bill second. wants to second that amendment. I will amend that second, yes. Thank you. So there's a motion and a second on the table. And I would like to call for the question. Melanie, any roll call, please. President Ryrie? Aye. Commissioner Zemke? Aye. Commissioner Matush? Aye. Commissioner Chankarali? Aye. Commissioner Moranis? Aye. We move on to number 10. AT&T and internet service. Oh, that, oh, that was just a call to call for the question. I think you need to take a vote now on the, um, the, motion. the motion. My motion. Motion. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me, Melanie. Roll call. Call on the motion, please. <clears throat> Commissioner Zemke. Aye. Commissioner Matush. Aye. Commissioner Jane Corrali. Aye. Commissioner Lorenz. Aye. President Ryan. Aye. Item, item number ATT and T redundant internet, internet service installation at district office. Karoski, this is your item. Uh-oh. We lost Lizzie. Hi, Commissioner. Ryan. Ryan. Oh. Hi there. Go ahead, yeah. I don't see you, but are you? Uh, Jim, I was under the impression that you'd be presenting this item to the board based on how the staff report was written. Okay, I can present it. Oh, thank you. 
Go ahead, Mr. Mr. Pratt. <clears throat> President Ryring, this is a uh, request for uh, approval for $53,232.55 to get into AT&T redundant intercept service for the district office. Currently, we, we have one cable provider uh, that provides internet service to the district office and has reliability issues. And we wanna make sure that we continue to get internet service during public meetings or otherwise, as it shuts down both access to the systems at Pillar Point Harbor and Oyster Point Marina too, uh, when we lose that connection to our servers. So this would, this internet service would provide that redundancy when we do lose the current provider goes down, this will automatically kick in and provide that backup, it's our backup service for uh, the internet. The recommendation from staff is to establish redundant internet, internet connection to support conductivity of public access and employee productivity approved procurement of equipment and labor in the amount of $53,232.55 to install an AT&T fiber optic cable and associated equipment at the Harbor District Office located at 504 Avenue Alhambra and further authorize the general manager to execute the associated work order. And the main cost of this is digging the trench for installing the, the several hundred feet of fiber optic cable to reach our building. <clears throat> Standing by for any questions. Any questions for the scum board? This is members of the public, public, you know, open public comment right, right now for John Olam. Thank you, President Rearing. Uh, that we can all agree, Comcast sucks. And uh, our service here in at the south end of town goes down all the time. But you are choosing the absolute most expensive by far method of dealing with this. This is an example of why you should have some input from the community with has expertise on certain issues. Obviously, somebody doesn't hasn't thought this one through. For example, you could buy a 5G setup that would allow you to maintain connectivity at your office. Something like that would run you about $1,000 for the equipment and basically you're just a 5G account. And so as long as there's still 5G available, then you'll still have internet services and there is no need for the vendor to do proactively anything. It's all just routed through a firewall. It uh, knows how to do it automatically. Your services just keep right on going. It's smooth. doesn't matter how you get that second uh, switch in there. Hmm. And I know this works because I have it in my house. When Comcast goes down, I, I need connectivity and I still have connectivity because my 5G connection kicks in. Another way you could handle this is to move all of your uh, mission critical machines up to the cloud. You could put this on AWS. And for less than a hundred bucks a month, I imagine, maybe $200 a month. A third way you could handle it is to use a huge, huge satellite dish, like you're living out in the sticks, pointed at the satellite. You have a little tiny bit of issue with, um, I can't remember the word, um, but it's to, uh, it affects you if you're playing Twitch video games, which I hope you're not doing there, but you can get that service for a hundred dollars a month. And that'll last you about 53 years at that rate. So I uh, hope you'll give me 30 seconds more because I'm trying to save you all some money. Uh, with a huge satellite dish, you'd be able to have your redundancy and eventually AT&T will get to extending that plan to you. And I'm sure it'll happen within the next 53 years. Thank and at you. that point, you'll be able to hook Thank up. Thank you, Mr. Olam. Your two minutes is up. We have another member in Burr Public with their hand raised. Uh, Sabrina. Yes, thank you. Um, so I had my hand raised for the previous agenda item, but I wasn't called on. And um, I wanted to thank staff for their hard work. 
on the West Trail Shoreline Restoration Project. So um, I know the project's ongoing. I really appreciate all the effort there. And I did think that the comments regarding um, <clears throat> making that project as user-friendly and uh, family-friendly and aesthetically pleasing as possible uh, would be fantastic. So any any work that could be done with the contractor or um, I don't know if it's the engineer to improve that project and make it more aesthetically pleasing um, and working with, you know, the Mid Coast Community Council and other local groups to help make that happen. So would really be appreciated. I'm going to cut you short. This is not the agenda item that we're on right now. We do have. Well, you didn't call me on the last item, Wait, so I'm getting my comment in. It is uh, Jeff Clark. Liz, Lizzie, can you hit Jeff? Okay. Yes, Jeff here. Um, I was going to address the last item, which talked about uh, uh, climate change and the. Uh, the, 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 this, this, this theory that we're all going to be smothered by the ocean is um, uh, just a theory. I lived in the house where the Yacht Club is in 1975. And when you talk about sea level rise, um, we're now in 2022. And the building is still in the same place we're talking a lot of years and um i think that emergency anything with regard to sea level rise is not really not realistic one of the things that so far, show so far you you also happen to be off topic this agenda item um Sorry about i'm going to back to i'm going to close public comment right now uh, move back to Commissioner under discussion. Is, is there any Commissioner discussion on this item or do I have, have a motion? I'll make a motion. Um, to establish redundant internet connection to support connectivity public access and employee productivity, approved procurement of equipment and labor in the amount of $53,232.55 to install an AT&T fiber, opti fiber optic cable and associated equipment at the Harbor District Office located at 504 Avenue Alhambra and further authorize the general manager to execute the associated work order. Have a second. I'll second that. Melanie, roll, roll, please. Commissioner Matush. Aye. Commissioner Chang Curley. Aye. Commissioner Reynas. Aye. President Ryrick. Aye. Commissioner Zemke. Aye. Motion carries. Our next item is number 11, the preliminary budget fiscal year, year 2022-23, operating budget and five-year capital improvement pro program. Uh, Julie, this is your item. Good afternoon, commissioners. Um, this item uh, was presented to you last month at the Harbor Commission meeting. The Finance Committee also um, discussed this document um, before that last meeting, and then again on March 28th, and that was Commissioner Chang Crawley and Commissioner Matouche. Um, there were some last minute changes to what's presented in the board package. And so as I go through this presentation, I will call those changes out. 
uh, and they have to do with the increase in costs associated with the Oyster Point Marina project. And then also um, we increase the estimates for the dock projects at Pillar Point Harbor based on the most recent engineering estimates. And I guess cost of construction is going up dramatically over the last three years. Um, we estimated that the dock replacement 12 through 14 at Oyster Point Marina would be around $6 million. The latest estimate with a contingency added into it is 18 million. So that's a significant increase. Um, this document basically takes out the funding for the Oyster Point Marina project. And um, so anyway, I'll, I'll go through here and I'll point out differences from what was presented in the last board meeting. And then also uh, go through here and point out what's changed based on what was actually published uh, as part of this agenda item. All right, so oops. The, the first thing that's changed obviously is this summary information on the CIP cost. Over the next um, five years, we estimate approximately $3.5 million in additional funding from revenues expected to exceed expenditures. Um, and the reason for that is because if you remember from last meeting, in our five-year forecast, we were limiting the increase in salary and benefit line items to 1% per year so that we could balance out five years. Um, now that we don't need, well, not that we don't need the $6 million, but because the funding has to come from other sources, a small part of that $6 million was used to increase salaries and benefits by 3% instead of the 1%. So this number here used to be around $4 million. Now it's slightly reduced so that we would be able to afford that additional increase in salary and benefits moving on. Um, and so the, the total of the revenues with this amount over five years, plus this 11.2 million equals the 14.8 million. I don't know why it's going on down by itself, but uh, the budget calendar, um, we don't have a, a May meeting in here. Um, we don't anticipate uh, needing to change this document further between now and the final budget adoption, which is um, calendared to take place on June 15th at the um, public meeting. We've um, updated all of the goals in this document. If you remember the draft document didn't include an update of the goals. And so we've um, finalized you know, what we're doing and completing here, uh, we just did complete the administrative building purchase um, at the end of last month. And um, for next year, we expect to continue to work on the water quality at the beaches, that we would amend the RV park lease to reflect the RV park restroom and green space project, and that we obtain maximum occupancy of the 504 Avenue Alhambra building and negotiate leases for any vacant uh, office spaces um, that will earn, a, again, unmodified opinion on the district's financial statements. 
uh, that will create plans, including the training plan and the communications plan and complete the cybersecurity plan. Um, the next year, um, our MOUs expire on June 30th, 2023. So uh, we will complete the negotiations of operating engineers and Teamsters MOU. And then the capital projects um, will complete the tenant row ADA public restroom project. We'll begin construction on the RV park restroom and green space improvements. Um, this red section, it said that we would begin construction, but now that's changed to complete preliminary engineering and design phase because of that increase in the estimate that we don't have the funding available for that. Again, I don't know why it's moving on me. Um, and then the last uh, item here is that we uh, work on the East Outer Harbor dredge project to include surfers beach replenishment and the eelgrass mitigation plan um, that we execute the mitigation plan and that we obtain permits. This section is all the same. Um, and so is this, um, the sections are all the same. Here again, we're, we're changing the projected capital assets for the fiscal year 22-23. This used to be $11 million. Now it's reduced by the $6 million that we had originally used to fund the other projects. And um, the accumulated property tax revenues from previous fiscal years, uh, $1.3 million in capital grants um, to fund that $5.8 million capital projects. It's all the same. Um, this is the number here that's been changed. That 5.83 was reduced by the $6 million. Uh, we updated all these tables to include the district goals um, as part of the GFOA certificate of excellence. Um, this is a requirement. And so we have tied together the strategic goal with the objective, the measure of that objective, uh, what our um, dynamics are in order to reach that measure, and then whether or not we achieve the goal or and what we think we're gonna do next year, whether that's gonna continue to be a goal. There's been new goals that have been added to all of this. That's, and you know, same with Pillar Point Harbor, Oyster Point Marina, that goal has been changed to complete the design and engineering. And this number here, the capital expenditures has been decreased by the $6 million. Right, this is the five-year forecast. Um, again, we didn't need this annual increase in working capital as much as we, when we did this five-year forecast, we had already committed that $6 million to the Oyster Point Marina project. So now that we don't have to commit, not that we don't have to, that's the wrong words. <laughs> now that the budget isn't showing that commitment of the $6 million. Um, there is an ability to increase the salaries, wages, and benefits so that this annual increase in working capital here, we still are getting a little bit of an increase up through fiscal year 24, 25, and then it's starting to level off until it becomes negative. 
um, in the fifth year. So basically spending down some of our reserves in this fifth year. And um, just to reiterate why that's happening, it's all related to the state proposing a law that would decrease the Harbor District's excess ERAP funds. And that, that would be estimated to decrease our funds at 350,000 in fiscal year 22-23. And then that, that decrease would continue to grow to $1.4 million in, in five years out. Um, the other thing here is um, I just said this used to be 1% and this used to be 4% below. Now it's 3% and 2% below. The non personnel expenditures will increase by 2.5% each year, except in the year 23 24. We think that we should be able to reduce some of the items, um, specifically um, the, the consulting line item and the bad debt fees. And we looked at you know, what we have control over or what we should have control over. And we said we can cut that operating expense line item by $200,000. Um, and then if you, you say there's going to be a 2.5% inflationary increase, the actual additional amount towards working capital is $107,000. Um, we've up this pillar point, Johnson Peer reconfiguration by $12 million. This used to be 38 million, now it's 50 million because of the increase in the construction costs. Number four used to be 6 million, which was funded. Now it's 18 million, remains unfunded. We've changed this one, so we purchased that in March of 2022. And then we've, um, updated these numbers here accordingly as already explained previously. So that um, ends my presentation. I'd be happy to take any questions or comments or if you would like to see further changes before you adopt the preliminary budget, but staff's recommendation is to adopt the preliminary budget with the up dates associated with the new cost estimates for those projects. <clears throat> Thank you, Julie. I'm going to, to, before we do board discussion, I'm going to open up a public comment for item number 11 on Sabrina Brennan. I don't see the hand raised. Thank you. Um, so I would like to thank staff for that excellent report. There's clearly a lot of financial concerns going on with the district and the um, increase in projected costs are something that this district needs to um, deal with. Today uh, in the last uh, item, Jeff Clark made climate change denial remarks. While I don't agree with him, I would have liked to have heard all of Jeff Clark's remarks regarding climate change denial. Unfortunately, he was cut off by Commissioner Raring. I hope that in the future, the public is allowed to comment. Thank you.
another member of the, the public, John Olin. Thank you, President Baring. So, um, when I was learning to fly airplanes, one of the things they stressed was, is if you were in trouble, confess. Don't sugarcoat your problem. Don't lie about it. Confess your situation and get the help you need and don't worry about the consequences. Um, let that happen later. And this budget looks like uh, that is happening happening pretty late because I'm really under, trying to understand how on April 1st there was a meeting with the South San Francisco Liaison Committee and nothing was discussed regarding the incredible increase in costs in the Harbor District's inability to pay them for the projects that uh, Tom Matush and Virginia Chen Corrali obligated the Harbor District to fund. And now it's great that uh, Ms. Van Hoff has removed that $6 million, but at a minimum, the Harbor District is obligated to spend that $6 million. And so it's an obligation. So I don't really think anything has changed all that much in your financial position in that respect. You have to ask yourself, how could this have come to about? How could a project become three times as expensive in only three years. I mean, these commitments were made not too long ago and they've tripled. So we'd have to ask, were the, the estimates unrealistic at the beginning? Uh, how could that happen? And are they gonna quadruple and quintuple and sextuple and seventuple, whatever? You're in trouble, but you've admitted it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to close public comment on this item now. And commissioners, is there any discussion? Or do I have a motion? Commissioner Matouche. Motion to uh, adopt resolution number 22-11, approving the preliminary budget fiscal year 2022-23 operating budget and five-year capital improvement program. I'll second that motion. Um, would, is you. it as presented or as published in the um, agenda? As presented. Great. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Commissioner Lorenus, you have your hand up. Yes, thank you. I'm curious about the, the implications of removing the six million out of the budget. How'd, are there implications to that? Is this just bookkeeping? With respect to the project, Commissioner Lorenus, the implication is that we're going to finish the design, engineering, and permitting for the project, but uh, we'll have to seek that additional funding, if possible, uh, to complete the project or delay the project because the district simply doesn't have that $18 million uh, to complete that project. And so since it's, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm not part of the, the liaison committee, but so this is uh, something that, at least in my understanding, that we're contractually obligated to perform. Um, it seems like removing it would, if, if I was the city of South San Francisco, I'd be a little bit concerned about it disappearing from the budget. Um, so I'm just wondering, are there implica further implications to that or did, is there a, um, have there been discussions about it or not? That will be discussed in the following agenda item, but uh, okay. yeah, we, will be we will be making those uh, convers having those conversations in the near future uh, to discuss these challenges 
and also uh, seek additional funding or options for funding. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Um, if there are no other comments by commissioners, I don't see any hands up. So, uh, Melanie, roll call, please. Commissioner Jen Crawley. Aye. Commissioner Lorenas. Aye. President Ryrie. Aye. Commissioner Zemke. Aye. Commissioner Matouche. Aye. The, the motion varies, and we'll, we'll move to number 12. Boys Point Marina, San Mateo Keo County Harbor District liaison, liaison can report capital improvement projects. Um, Commissioners Matouche and Zemke, this is um, informational only for us. For us. Uh, it's just informational. Read it and enjoy. We had our meeting and <clears throat> it's obligated under uh, the MOU that we meet at least once a year. And... <clears throat> Uh, that was our meeting, and I'm not saying there won't be more, but uh, Commissioner Matush, yes, this this one is the liaison meeting, j just uh, for let me make sure. Yeah, this is just the liaison meeting for San Mateo County Harbor District, not the joint liaison meeting with the City of South San Francisco. I think that one is the, the, the next one, number 13, I assume. Do I have it backwards? We do have, um, we do have two uh, items. Yeah, one the, of these just the joint is first. number 13. So uh, Commissioner Matush, uh, if you like, I can uh, summarize the meeting in the, in the joint report that, it, that you and Commissioner Zemke issued. Excellent. Yeah, thanks. This is a commission report from Commissioner Zemke and Commissioner Matouche, and this is the Oyster Point San Mateo County Harbor District Liaison Committee, it, not the joint meeting. So uh, right. the two commissioners on the, on the liaison committee held a meeting on April 7th to discuss the capital improvement plan as is applied to Oyster Point Marina. As we are all aware, the city of South San Francisco owns the Oyster Point Marina and the district manages, maintains, and improves the marina under the 2018 agreement between the city and Harbor District. The Harbor District under the agreement receives all revenue generated from the marina. The original term for the 2018 agreement is 15 years, which takes us out to 2033, with two additional terms that automatically renew for 10 years each, which takes us out to December of 2053. Either party may withdraw from this agreement at the renewal periods with a two-year notice. Under the 2018 agreement, the district is obligated to complete certain capital improvement projects at Oyster Point Marina. One capital improvement project uh, is the replacement of docks 12 through 14, which is estimated in the uh, agreement as $5 million. Uh, Last year or the year before, as we were working on it, it increased to $6.7 million. And then reconfigure of the entrance ramps for one through six is also a project that is required to maintain the marina. And the estimated cost two years ago was $1,391,000. However, uh, between the August, uh, April 7th meeting into uh, this meeting, we had an update on estimates based on today's market rates to replace docks 12, 13, 14, and the reconfiguration of docks one through six and 11. And that new cost is $18 million, which is 10 million over the original estimate or 222% increase. Survey of docks one through six and the replacement of those docks uh, is required under the agreement. Estimated cost back uh, when we were looking at it originally was 12 to $14 million. With taking into consideration the 222% increase in costs, 
This project's now estimated to cost 28 million for those replacement of docks. The district has also has opportunity under the 2000 agreement, which was adopted in the 2018 agreement to construct a 40,000 square foot commercial building at Oyster Point. And the city is obligated to rent that land to the district for $1 per year. The estimated cost of the construction right now is 2.1 million. The district would retain all profits made leasing out the spaces in this new building. After receiving a detailed brief, the committee directed the general manager to meet with the city manager to discuss funding options because the district cannot fund all the necessary repairs and options at Oyster Point Marina and to seek uh, potential amendments to the 2000 agreement with respect to the commercial building and re uh, leasing parameters and report back to the committee. So my intention as the general manager, as earlier mentioned, is I'm scheduling a meeting with the city manager uh, of South San Francisco to discuss the projects, the increased costs, and uh, t the timelines. The district is in no position right now based on the budget of paying $28 million or $18 million to complete the required projects or the $2.1 million to build the commercial building. That's what the committee received in a brief, and that's the direction that the committee gave to me as the general manager. Back to you, Commissioner Matouche. Uh, that was a summary of our meeting. Um, I believe this whole thing is informational, correct? Yes, yeah. informational. <clears throat> so I have nothing further. Uh, Commissioner Uranus, you used to have your hand up. Yes, thank you. Um, actually, I had left it up accidentally, but since since you called me, I do have some some comments. Um, so th this these numbers really shouldn't be a surprise to the commission, um, but I do want to thank Commissioner Zemke and uh, Commissioner Matouche for writing a nice concise document for us it's easy to see where the numbers are they're not hidden anywhere it's very clear and um i do wish our staff uh well in negotiating this with the city of south san francisco um i have my fingers crossed for you um but like i said these numbers should not be a surprise to anyone we've We've been dealing with this MOU in various forms for a number of years. And I'm disappointed that at the end of, of uh, what was it, 2018, this MOU was signed at the, last, at the last minute. Happily for some of you, you weren't on the commission, so you can sit back and watch the fun without, without being blamed for it. I am disappointed and I'm hopeful that we've learned a lesson here and that we're not gonna do something like this again. I know that our staff at the time worked very hard to try to get out from under this and unfortunately our commission approved it. We have uh, two members of the public with their hands raised, um, John Allen. Commissioner Lorenus is just too nice a guy. Uh, the commission didn't approve it. Virginia Chang Corrali and Tom Matouche made it happen. They made it happen because they didn't trust Nancy Rearing because she had already published an article in the review calling for Tom Matouche to resign or be forced out of the commission due to his um, need to send out pornography to people. So, um, yeah, that's how it happened. And uh, not thought out well. It's clear that nobody's business experience or financial analysis experience was used or even was there because there's just no way the project tripled in that time frame. 
and you're not even close to starting it. So it will be quadrupled and quintupled before you get anywhere. So the real question is, is it's obvious. So the district is going to have to go there and say, we can't afford it. Well, we've made commitments we cannot commit keep, keep. We can't even keep the commitments to spend the original sums of money that we committed to. And now we've got this excuse that it's tripled in cost. And so staff's going to go and, that, and tell that to Mr. Futrell. And then the lawyers are going to get involved. Also, Ms. Corrali could get some endorsements from the South City or South San Francisco Illuminati. And it didn't work out well for us, but it worked out well for her. She attained them. And now you're going to have to deal with it. You were told this is going to be happening multiple times ever since I became involved. Now I'm not the only one that was telling you this was going to happen. And now it happened. It's on you. We also have Sabrina Brennan. Thank you. Um, so I voted against the MOU um, when I was on the Harbor Commission and sadly um, was not able to get the support of the other commissioners at the time, um, particularly Commissioner Virginia Chang Corrali and Commissioner Tom Matouche, who supported this um, MOU. Um, my recollection is it was largely based on political favors that um, one or both of them were seeking from council members in South San Francisco, who I don't think are still serving any longer. Um, as we know, there is a chronic flooding problem at Oyster Point Marina and the sea level rise projections, which are included in the master plan that you all approved earlier at this very meeting, are grim. There is absolutely no reason to spend any money at Oyster Point Marina. Please stop. Do not fund any more projects there. It doesn't make sense. It's not a good investment. It, the, the location is sinking and sea level is rising. It's going underwater, literally. So moving forward, um, the district needs to reprioritize how it's spending its money, needs to end the MOU, get out of it, end it, do whatever you have to do. It was a bad decision. Get out of the agreement. And the idea that you would even consider spending money on a new commercial building at this flood zone is insane. So please do not build any sort of commercial structures in this flooding area. Thank you. Uh, you see a hand in that? Hold on, let me see who it is. Uh, Uranus. Oh, I'm just, I removed my hand, thank you. Um, so this was, was information, no, no, let's see, which item are we on? We are on the committee report, right? So this is information only. Great, and then on uh, item 13, Oyster Point Marina Joint Liaison Committee Report. Uh, is this, this the uh, committee's report to give, Jim, or will you be giving it, giving it? I can provide a summary if that's what the committee would uh, prefer. That would be fine, Jim, thanks. I think, thank you, Commissioner Zemke. Comments is, uh, is the San Mateo County Harbor District and the City of South San Francisco held a joint liaison meeting on April 1st, 2022, as required by the 2018 agreement. The committee received presentations on the uh, 2022 annual OPM joint report issued by the general manager and city manager. The status of the phase one C park and landscape improvements. An update on the spit by the city of South San Francisco an update on the Kilroy Oyster Point development, 
and an update on the Ensemble Hotel development at Oyster Point. So the, the, for those of you who haven't been out to Oyster Point recently, uh, it has completely changed. There's new parking lots and new roadways and the new access points for docks one through six and uh, up to the level of the new elevation, uh, but we'll still have to, where the landings are, raise those. But it's start, it looks beautiful out there. Uh, they're finishing up the landscaping and the park area, the restrooms and the showers are all modern and uh, look fantastic, which will all lead to hopefully more uh, slip rentals in the OPM Marina facility. No action was taken at the meeting beyond approving the 2021 uh, meeting minutes. Back to you, Commissioner Zemke. Okay, thanks. Um, I think, I mean, the, the, the feedback I did get from the city too and my sources there is they, they appreciated the meeting. Obviously, we did not have the... Um, material uh, together to uh, discuss the uh, cost uh, issues that we just discussed in item number 12. So um, we do uh, wish staff well in uh, their discussions on those subjects in the future. Tom, any thoughts that you would like to uh, share? No, you covered it well. The information, particularly pointing out the information during our meeting was not available to us at that time and it was subsequent studies. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, General Manager Pruitt for talking about the changes in the construction and the improvements that have been made uh, by not only the Harbor District, but also the city of South San Francisco. Okay, I think that's all we have and this is just an informational item. Thank you very much, Commissioners Matush and Mki, and thank you, Jim, for your report. Um, I'm, we're going to move on to, to item number 14. The human you have one public comment, uh, oh. President Ryrie. I've already closed public comment on this, just didn't I, or no? No? All right. I don't recall you yet a public comment on this issue. Okay, yet. I'll, I'll open public comment. Uh, uh, John Ollum. Thank you, Mr. Pruitt. Um, it's obvious that the board president is not interested in anybody's comments, and understandably. This is sort of fascinating. Uh, you know, Mr. Put, you know this is going to generate a, a Public Records Act request. There seems to have been some effort to find out this new estimate. And the information was not available to anybody prior to April 1st meeting. So I guess we mean you would have had to on March 31st known that you had this huge issue. I mean, humongous, huge issue. So how did this study get initiated? Who initiated it? When was it initiated? How did these numbers come about? And how is it possible that nobody knew nothing on April 1st? And now you guys know that you're in like a world of hurt. And I've got to wonder what staff thinks about this. How gutless can you guys be? I mean, you had to know this was coming, but you didn't even bring it up at the, at the meeting as if it was just like, this just came out of the blue sometime after 5 p.m. on April 1st. Is this a joke? I mean, come on. Is this really the way it went down that you knew nothing until after that meeting and now you're going to leave it staff and you're just going to sit there and smile and say, good luck staff and dealing with this humongous mess that we created and didn't even have the guts to spring up face to face with the people who you now have to go negotiate with? I know you just got a raise, Mr. Uh, Pruitt, but they ain't paying you enough. Thank you. Uh, 
Oh, we have another public public comment. John Paul knows us. Sabrina Brennan this time. Yeah, thank you. Um, just to make it extra clear, uh, if private companies want to waste money building in the Bay on land that's a garbage dump that's sinking and sea level is rising and flooding the land on a regular basis and the problem, as we know, and as is documented, is only getting worse, then those private companies should also be required to cover the cost for the infrastructure needed to mitigate the flooding. This should not be something that the public has to pay for. Secondly, public agencies such as the San Mateo County Harbor District and the city of South San Francisco should not waste the public's tax funds on building um, capital improvement projects in flood zones, in locations that we know are sinking as well as flooding. So this is not good public policy. Uh, it's bad public policy. And I expect that this commission be responsible and be thoughtful about how you use the public's funds and use the public's funds on things that are going to benefit the public, not continue to cost the public in infrastructure to mitigate flooding. Thank you. Uh, we're going to, I'm going to close public comment now. And since the previous item was informational only, I'm going to move on to, to item 14, Human Relations Committee Assignments. This, this is my item, and I would like, would like to appoint Commissioners Touche and Chang Karali to, to the Human Relations Com Committee. Uh, uh, and um, the next, next item is from the consent calendar, Commissioner Lorena's item number six. DVA uh, Kidnarian Properties approve assignments to Harbor Fuel Dock LLC. Um, Commissioner Lorraine, do you have comment on them? Yes, I do. Uh, actually, I just have a question for staff, maybe the our attorneys. Are there any implications to this, to changing this? Is this an extent, another version of what we saw with the, with the KN Properties rental of the, RV park. Yes, this is um, basically exactly the same as the other one. Um, they are signing a guarantee uh, in for as an individual um, guarantee of the lease. Pete Nairhan will be signing that. That's attached, and I believe Tricia. Um, analyze that last time um, when we did the assignment for the K&N um, RV park. Um, this is, is very, very similar. That's right. Okay, thank you. Covered by the personal guarantee. Yeah, uh, got it. Thank you. All right, then we're gonna move on to item well, number Hold on, I'll make a number motion proof. to approve the request by Kate Nearhan, DBA KN Properties, to oh, yeah. assign its lease with the district to Harbor Fuel Dock LLC, doing business as Harbor Fuel Dock, and authorize the general manager to execute the consent to assignment of lease. Thank you for that. Uh, do I have a second? I will. Leave, I will second that. Thank you both. Uh, roll call, Melanie. Melanie. Commissioner Marinas. Aye. President Ryrie. President Ryrie. Aye. Commissioner Zumke. Aye. Commissioner Matush. Aye. Commissioner Chang Karali. Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. And we'll move on to item 16. I have a motion to authorize public meeting meetings to be held via teleconferencing pursuant to government code section 4953E. I'll move. So move. I have a second. Was there a second? Second it. 
April. Oh, Melanie. President Ryrie. Aye. Commissioner Zemke. Aye. Commissioner Matouche. Aye. Commissioner Changarali. Aye. Commissioner Lorenas. Aye. Are there any other commissioner com comments or for agenda items? I'll move to adjourn at 3 p.m. I have a commissioner comment, but it's not on the. Commissioner Lorraine, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I'd like to point out that running these meetings by Zoom, if it's not obvious to everyone in the public, that it's difficult for whoever is behind the scenes trying to navigate questions from the public, questions from commissioners. So it's hard, hard to get it right. Hard to see folks with their hands raised or maybe they're not seen. We've done a pretty good job, but I, I would appreciate a little more, um, for lack of a better term, just a little more relaxing of the, of the way we run our meetings. Because if, if we were running these meetings in the, in the old way when we were all in the room together, it's really easy to see that someone raised their hand and would like to make a comment. So for example, with Mr. Clark's wanting to continue his conversation about sea level rise, it was out of the, already we had moved on, but it was because he, we didn't see his hand up. So in the interest of listening to the public, whether we wanna hear it or not, I think we should be a little more relaxed about it and let people have their comments. It's only gonna help us. That's it, thanks. Thank you. Do we have a second to adjourn? Second. Commissioner Crawley, do you have your hands up? Yeah, yeah I just want to make a, a quick commissioner comment. Um, I just want to thank the staff for all the hard work. I mean, it's very hard to um, listen to false accusations by certain members of the public. Um, and I just want to know, I just want everyone on the staff to know that your work is appreciated um, and that especially as we navigate through the um, finances because of ex exigent circumstances with the pandemic and, and the things that we're dealing with, um, just know that at least for me, Jim, Melanie, and Julie and John, I appreciate the work that you're doing. Um, and I, I think that we're trying to get through the budget as, uh, as quickly and painlessly and accurately as possible. Uh, and I think that we are managing our money better than we have ne ever been. Um, we're at least not asking for reimbursements to trip to Hawaii, <laughs> which is crazy and unethical. So with that, um, I'm gonna call for the question to adjourn the meeting. Uh, Mel Helen, you all call please. Commissioner Zemke. Aye. Commissioner Matush. Aye. Commissioner Changarali. Aye. Commissioner Lorenas. Yes. President Ryrie. Aye. And now I need a motion and a second to adjourn. We have that, I move. Oh, we have that, Melanie. Yeah. Roll. Commissioner Matouche? Aye. Commissioner Jane Crowley? Aye. Commissioner Lorenas? Aye. President Ryrie? Aye. Commissioner Zemke? Aye. Thank you, everyone, for your time today. Have a great week. week. Thank okay, you. Thank you, Jim, John, Julie, and Melanie, and commissioners. Stay safe. And Tricia. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>